I, 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 I don't know, can you hear me? If you can hear me, that's fine. Um, if you can't hear me, let me know. Uh, all right. Be sure and let them know the location. In other words, uh, Gail Lightfoot of Sam Demas, uh, I, I don't know what her occupation is or whatever, <laughs> and, and just run them down. They will take that and then they will send it out on the wire because they know Sam Demas wants to be, uh, know about it. You get home, it's usually in the Sam Demas paper. So this is a wonderful opportunity for saying, and it gives people, once again, the feeling that the party it makes the party visible, 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 that's what you want. There's something is happening, there's activities. They have picked, the public has pictures in their mind of this election of officers and all these people that are electing the officers. So it's very important. The other thing is awards and commendations. Now, a lot of you know how the, uh, what was the award that Georgia uh, had, uh, that they gave for the worst uh, cracked, pot cracked pot award. What a good idea. That got tremendous publicity. Uh, when I was at a Georgia State Convention, that was the main thing that the media came out to find out who was going to get the cracked pot award. And uh, that was in all the papers. And one of the reasons is you're picking up the name, you're tying it in with the name of somebody that's already in office. And of course, tying on to the publicity that someone else is getting or some other event, as I said, is very, is very important. Uh, in the National just put out recently the, the, the timing was bad and I can talk about timing for a long on end. Timing is very important. They put it out the day before uh, January 15th. They put out January 14th. Well, everybody's waiting what's going to happen on January 15th, you know, when the Iraqis had to get out of Saudi Arabia, uh, of, uh, of Kuwait. And so it didn't get any attention, even in Oregon. As far as I know, there was no attention in Oregon. But what the National did was they offered a special peace award to Senator uh, Hatfield from Oregon because he was the only person that voted against both the resolutions as far as war goes. Now that, you see, was, should have gotten some national attention. It was sent out. Uh, I don't know who they sent it to. This was after I left uh, National. but. Uh, uh, I noticed it, uh, I heard about it, so I sent it out across Oregon. And, but that's the kind of thing that gets attention. So if you want to give an award, any kind of special awards, recognition of any kind, uh, put it in the paper. All right, now, what is news? We're talking about writing a news release. You want most of your information right up front. Um, they used to tell reporters, don't write headlines, because the copy editors like to write their own headlines. And the, and the person who writes the headline isn't usually the person that covers the, the, uh, the event. For example, the man that has a byline on this story about Indian activists feels U.S. system wrong uh, did not write the man that covered it. Ken Schwartz Schultz did not write that headline. It's written by someone else, so don't blame the, 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 the reporter for what happens in the headline. Um, the, um, the, the, the things that excite the media, and I'm going to go down them briefly and uh, give you kind of a, um, some examples that I can think of, is first of all, anything that's unique or unusual. If, if you're doing something uh, like giving away dollar bills to show the, the, the rate of in, that inflation has hit us and then, you know, a dollar bill isn't worth anything anymore, a dollar bill, uh, that's, a, that's a unique and exciting event. It's visual. You get TV out and you publicize that and that's great. Now, one example of that, I think, is, is Rebecca Donner got good publicity in Santa Monica. Was it Santa Monica that she ran in against uh, Tom Hayden? Uh, I saw those clips come across my desk. Uh, the reason is that she was a student and so young. I think she, 19? Yes. 19. I, I don't know how she did, and I'm interested, but I sent copies of the clippings to the national media because I thought this an angle that they might just pick up on because her picture was there, she was young. So I, I sent uh, these clips out, and uh, and that because it was a unique kind of interesting thing, a student running against Tom Hayden, he's well known, and I thought they might pick up on it. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I don't know what went out across the country. Human, anything human interest, where you're doing something, the Libertarian Party's involved with something that helps people, or has to do with a dog or a cat, <laughs> an animal, 
Um, and habitat for humanity is something that uh, libertarians across the country, some libertarians have gotten very involved with habitat for humanity, and that's where people, individuals, go out and help to rehab old houses or build houses uh, for low-cost shelter for people, for the homeless. And there's a man, very active, Paul Siegel, who's been in the party since 1972, is very active in that back in the East Coast uh, uh, cities. Uh, locality, as I told you before, if you have something happen in a locality, uh, a libertarian from uh, Monterey is going to run for uh, state office, then Monterey is interested that they have a person running for this statewide office or, or running for office even somewhere else or as head of a national organization, whatever it is. So you, you found that uh, anything having to do with your party, prominent in some other way maybe than in the libertarian cities, but one of the best examples I can think of is that when Ron Paul resigned from the Republican, it's a very big newsworthy event, should have been publicized in every way. Well, I, I think he did, but I don't think the Libertarian Party did at that time. Because we, uh, something where you can tie into a timely event. Now, I know a lot of this is redundant to be repeated. Uh, the best thing, I think one of the best things that we had during the time I was at, with National at, um, and Media Relations was the uh, uh, summit, uh, the drug summit, which went to in Columbia. Now, that was Bob Waldrop in Utah. That was his idea. He tried to take it out in a Columbia paper that he thought that would be seen by everyone and indicate the Libertarian Party is opposed to uh, drug laws and that we want legalization. And when I heard that, I said, well, this is something that we can publicize in this country and tie into it. So I called Ron Paul. It so happened was going to be in Washington the day before the summit. I called a news conference. That was the only news conference I called during the whole 18 months because news conferences are diff difficult to get people out there, especially in Washington, D.C. We called a news conference and we said he was going to announce the formation of a new organization, a coalition to end drug violence, and uh, that the, the president was wrong and going, you know, its controls against drug running. But that wasn't the answer, that the answer was get rid of the drug laws. And we got out. Uh, uh, we got up. We had two television cameras there and about three or four or five radios and about uh, two uh, press. And uh, the, one of the TV shows was uh, the largest Spanish-speaking TV network in the world. They did uh, translated his remarks, put it on TV, and it went to every Spanish-speaking station that they were affiliated with in all the Spanish-speaking countries and in this country. I think there was something like uh, 48 locations in this country. Uh, he also got on mutual rate, uh, broadcasting radio, uh, uh, 136 stations. So, uh, but we tied into their drug summit. All the news was about the drug summit, and we had an opposing position. No one else came out with that kind of a position politically. So we had a wonderful thing to, to deal with, and I think a lot of you heard about it down in San Diego because it happened right at that same time. I held a news conference in San Diego at the same time, and everywhere I went, I could talk about that. It was very timely. And the other thing is things that affect people, and taxes is the biggest thing there. Anything where we can point out that they're going to raise our costs, they're going to raise our taxes, the Libertarian Party has ways of reducing the taxes. This Anybody that pays taxes or anyone, any citizen that's a productive citizen in this country is concerned about that, and certainly we ought to use that and, and get out with it. But anything that affects people, the draft, I mean, it doesn't have to be just taxes, but taxes is the best way. All right, I want to kind of just wrap up by saying that if you think about what you're doing as an activist and think how much impact is multiplied by this event, this thing that you're doing, getting before the public on television or radio or in print, then definitely make that a priority in whatever you're doing. Anything you're doing that you think is a good idea to promote libertarianism or the Libertarian Party, then the next thing you should think about is, can I go out to the public with this through some, so some media source? And, and make that a priority. You're going to do it, but you're going to publicize it. And I'll, I'll, I'll close with just giving you a, a couple of examples of what this does. I held a news conference in the Commerce, let me say, Commerce Subcommittee room in Washington, D.C. Uh, my Senator, Bob Hackwood, whom I ran against in 1980, and was friendly with, uh, arranged that we could use the room. So we held a news conference there to let the uh, 
to try to publicize the 1987 convention in Seattle. And I was responsible for the publicity of that and to let them know that here was a contested race, Ron Paul and Russell Means were running against each other. It's pretty exciting and give them a chance to meet the official, some of the officials too. So I had the DC head of the Libertarian Party and, the, and I had Dean Ahmad who was the national secretary and, the, and the, about six people that I invited there that were from the party that they were invited to meet. Uh, six of us were there, nobody came. But we had our materials out in the paper, and a fellow came up from a press room, and he said, I don't went, and I said, well, you're late, everybody's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but he saw, you know, we were standing, he saw a bunch of people standing around, he saw them, he grabbed the materials and the news releases and went downstairs, you know, with it, and as far as I know, it was in the, the, the con congressional, you know, little local uh, handout that they tell what's happened in the area. Then I went, when I went back uh, to my apartment, I, I phoned every news and this is another thing you want to want to do. Nobody comes, you go back and you phone all the people that you sent releases to and you say, gee, I'm sorry you missed our news conference. Would you like me to send you a release or would you like me to tell you what happened or would you like the candidate to come by your office? You know, you're, you're, and a lot of times they, they, they're apologetic. You know, they didn't come. So they'll say, gee, I'm sorry we couldn't make it. We, we didn't have a large enough crew. What happened? And they'll ask you that, especially if, they, if after a while you've been in contact with them and they know you're professional. So you tell them what happened. And uh, you will get coverage that way, or you will drop them off a release or fax them a release, or you, they will say, well, you know, uh, we're going to have our cameras, uh, let me see, our cameraman's going to be back in about an hour, could you bring them by the studio? You will get opportunities like that. So if the news conference doesn't work out and no one comes, don't worry about it. Go get everybody and say, I'm sorry you didn't come, what can I do to let you know what happened, you know, and help them that way. Uh, the other thing that I was going to say is we took pictures of our... <laughs> Libertarians all sitting in the subcommittee commerce room, and uh, one of the pictures we took with different people in the in the middle, sitting in the chairman's chair, and one of them had me in it. And I used that picture very effectively uh, when I campaigned for Congress this year. <laughs> uh, you know, it said uh, Tony Nathan holding a news conference in the subcommittee room, but I think it was the Department of Commerce or whatever it was. And uh, you can do things like that. Just keep publicity. In, in, in your mind. Now, the other thing I want to tell you about is I, I, I sent out a release when I was going to talk to a junior college women's group when I was running in 1976. And Jerry Brown was running for the presidency. Wasn't that 76, I think? And he was up in Oregon uh, uh, campaigning for the primary, and he wasn't on the primary ballot. He decided late he was going to run a write in campaign. And I don't know how many of you remember, but he got in as the write in candidate in Oregon on the primary. Uh, he won the primary, I think, as a write-in candidate. It was the most successful write-in campaign. You don't think so, or you do think so? Oh, no, I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah I, I believe he did. He, was our, uh, the, he won the primary there. And um, uh, anyway, he was due at the University of Oregon, and this little community college that I was talking at, uh, my, uh, my speech was supposed to take place about 1 o'clock, and at uh, 12 o'clock, uh, he was, he was uh, supposed to be at the University of Oregon. Well, I came, you know, a few minutes early as, uh, with my speech and everything prepared, and I'd sent out the releases, and I walk into this room where I'm going to speak to a group of women, and I expect maybe 15 or 20, and I walk into the room, and lo and behold, there's cameras galore all over the place, there's media all over the place, there's reporters seated down there, and there's about six women, you know, <laughs> sitting in the, in the front row of this, this room, and I said, where did all the media come from, you know, that, and they're there already, it's not even time for the... the speech to start or anything, and it turned out that Jerry Brown's plane was delayed. He wasn't going to be until 3 o'clock. Well, here's all these people that have come down from Portland to cover him at the University of Oregon. We're about 100 miles south, and uh, they don't know what to do with themselves, so they look at the tip sheet, and they say, oh, Tony Nathan, a candidate for Congress, is speaking at, at the local community college, and out they came. So... <laughs> So I had wonderful, you know, just marvelous coverage that was on all the, the, the TV stations, and luckily I had a good uh, speech prepared, I had good releases to issue them, I had my materials, and uh, uh, you never know when that's going to happen. I had, as you recall, you know, Timinsky, uh, you may know that in Poland, I'm wrapping up right now, <laughs> in Poland uh, we had a libertarian who was head, head of the Libertarian Party of Canada who held dual citizenship, go over and challenge Lech Walesa, you know, for, and he won the, in the primary, eliminated the, 
the prime minister of Poland as a, as a candidate and ran against Le Valenza. And many people thought uh, that he stood a, a good chance and he was getting publicity every day in the paper. It wasn't very good publicity in many ways, but he was getting publicity. And so I tried to latch onto that by sending out releases saying the Libertarian Party is, is worldwide, talking about our 22 people in the legislature in, uh, in, in Norway, uh, six, or six to ten Libertarians, I think, in the, the legislature in Peru, and trying to and indicating how, that uh, the, the U.S. is the largest Libertarian uh, uh, representation with over 100 people in office, and we elected for this last election and went out with all that, you know, which I could tie into the... We didn't know, it so happened that the same weekend that the election was being held in Poland, the National Committee was meeting in New York in a place not too far, maybe half an hour outside of central New York, uh, White Plains. I'm not that familiar with New York. So I, I didn't go to the meeting, but I said to the people there, I said, look, don't be surprised if, 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 if Tominski comes in anywhere close, or if, he's, if he wins the presidency, you're going to walk into a battery of cameras and, and people because I'm letting them know you're meeting there and are prepared to comment on his election. That's yeah, tying in with the news. Now, the, the release I sent out was that the National Committee would be meeting, that there would be representatives there, and I mentioned their names and where they could be contacted that would be glad to comment on the election, the Polish election and the libertarian side of it. They could have had the same thing happen to them happen to me. It so happens he was defeated very handily and he wasn't an item again so uh, to close I, I, I just want to tell you that if you try to to ask yourself what they're interested in and tie in your news stories your releases or your calls to what they're doing and what they're interested in you will find that 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 they are very uh, cooperative and willing to talk to you because they understand that you're concerned about their business and what their business is, which is news. You have to be concerned. It is a business. And with their, and their, with their problems, they will oftentimes, after a while, tell you why they can't cover you. They're shorthanded. Uh, they're, uh, I can give you all the stories. And don't be discouraged. Just be persistent. One of these days, you're going to walk into an event, you're going to find everybody's there to cover the libertarians because something happened somewhere in the world that makes what we have to say Libertarians have, are doing very, very, very important. And go after that publicity, folks. It isn't going to cost you anything except some time and effort. It's well worth it. The more professional you are, the nicer you are, the more you're going to build a, uh, a respect of the media community, and the more it's going to benefit the party and everybody running in the party. I know Californians are good at this. I know how good Jerry Collette is at getting out uh, people in, in Southern California. I'm sure that you're good at it all over, but you can do it in your own little town. Uh, Go after that because you will build the party in leaps and bounds if you can learn how to get visibility through media. Thank you.